Are you struggling with bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness? Perhaps you've been to countless counseling sessions, read all sorts of books on the subject, and listened to all kinds of sermons, but you still struggle with past hurts and resentments. If this is you, and you are willing to do what it takes to go deeper with God, then stay tuned, because not only are you about to be challenged, but I also have one free copy of an invaluable resource to help you break through the stronghold of hurt, bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness. Hi, and welcome to One Little Candle, a place where God's people can come to be encouraged and inspired to be the light that God calls us to be. And when our flame is burning bright, we can't help but light the flame of others along the way. Don't think that you can make a difference in your little corner of the world? Yes, you can, because all it takes is one little candle. I'm your host, Rebecca Bershwinger. Thanks for joining me for today's episode. Would you like to be part of a global outreach, sharing the word of God around the world without ever leaving your home and for as little as two hours of your time each week? Right now, people around the world are hurting more than ever, and they're looking for answers. They're desperate for hope, and many search for hope and answers online. Search for Jesus, a ministry of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, is actually looking for volunteers like you, right now, to share the gospel online. You can make a lasting impact for God's kingdom by becoming a Search for Jesus volunteer and see lives miraculously changed by Christ. Search for Jesus has an excellent training staff and program to train and equip you right from the comfort of your home. Even after you've completed your training, they're still there for you every step of the way. They're always providing the resources and tools that you will need to carry on your ministry of helping others to know that hope, that hope that's only found in Christ. So if you would like an opportunity to change lives and be a light in the darkness, you can learn more by logging on to www.searchforjesus.net. That's www.searchforjesus.net and help bring hope to a world in need. And now for today's episode. Hello and thanks for joining me today. As I shared with you last week, the story of the um, struggle that my siblings and I have gone through in settling our dad's estate since his death. It's been quite the spiritual journey, um, a spiritual test for all of us, one in which we've at times failed, but are, well, we're making progress together as individuals and as a family. And I had also mentioned to you that I had a rich resource to share with you this week. This resource is a book. This book can be a game changer for you as well, if you were at all struggling with with anything that, well, calls for you to set your own desire for justice aside, to set yourself aside, just as Jesus has always done. I've chosen to share this book with you today because I really believe with all my heart that if you are willing to do what it takes to go deeper with God. This book will definitely take you there. It'll take you to a deeper relationship with God, and it will leave you with much more of God and much less of yourself. Because isn't that what it takes for us in order to be able to conquer these things that keep us in bondage, these grudges, if you will, holding on to past hurts, offenses, bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, 
And not only do they keep us in bondage, I mean, they keep us from really living out our lives fully. It, they're joy stealers, for one thing, but it also keeps us, well, it keeps us apart from God because it puts up a wall between us and God. And if you're like me, I didn't even realize at the time that that wall was there. But looking back, there was definitely a wall there. So I'd like to read to you a statement from the author. The name of the book is The Calvary Road, and the author is Roy Hessian. And at the end of the show, I will let you know what you can do to secure a free copy. I have one free copy reserved for one of my subscribers. And I'll let you know at the end what you can do to enter for a free copy. So I have a statement I'd like to read to you by the author, and I want you to think about it as you hear it, because it's going to evoke some sort of emotion in you or some kind of thought. So really think about what kind of feelings come when you hear a statement like this. And here's that statement. As a bond servant of Jesus Christ, your position is one where you have no rights and no appeal, where you are the absolute property of your master to be treated and disposed of just as he wishes. Whew. <laughs> when I read that <laughs> for the first time, I was like, wow. I think in all honesty, for most of us, Hearing that can be a bit unpleasant or even unnerving. I know it was for me. I mean, we struggle. We all struggle with the desire to call the shots. We're control freaks and we don't know it. <laughs> it just depends on what area that it, that it is. But I think we all have our varying degree of um, being a control freak. So we struggle with the desire to call the shots. We want to do what we want to do. We want control over the when, where, why and how, right? And so when we are told that as Christians, followers of Christ, that Christ should be able to do with us what he wants, well, I think we'll probably say, oh yeah, that's that's true. But when we're actually in a situation and we've been hurt or wronged again, I think um, it's easier said than done. So this book, The Calvary Road by Roy Hessian, it's a book that is going to dig deep into the depths of your soul. And it's probably going to be a little painful as it's digging deep because this author is definitely going to challenge you to come to terms with the self-will that lies hidden within you, that lies hidden within all of us, the big I is not going to like what it's hearing, what it's reading. And I'm not saying this to sound dramatic or as a selling point for this book. I, I speak from experience, and I believe that this is truly a must-read for anyone who's serious about going deeper in their relationship with Christ. But as you can tell, again, <laughs> this book, it comes with a warning. You're going to have to be prepared to wage war with your flesh by letting the Holy Spirit break your will to his. And I know maybe all this, for some of you, maybe it just sounds negative, um, but it's not because we really, as Christians, we have to go through things like these in our life, in our lives, in order to stay close to Christ, in order to have more of him and less of us, right? I struggled with this. When I read this book, I had to read it in little bits and pieces. Actually, I had to read it out loud, slowly and methodically. And I had to do a lot of prayer in between. And I had to sometimes go back and read the same paragraph three or four times in order to really let it sink in. But it had a powerful influence in my life, and I believe it can have a powerful influence through yours. I was first introduced to this book by my pastor. And, well, I was meeting with him and his wife because my husband and I were going through, had been going through a very difficult 
season in our marriage that lasted probably two or three years. There was a lot of hurt and pain and old offenses um, from the both of us. But me, I kept track of them all. Yes, I had a notebook. And I had written there all the things that my husband had said to me that had hurt me or offended me. I had written things that I felt had been twisted or my words had been twisted or I hadn't been heard or acknowledged in my hurt and pain. And I had quite a few pages. (laughs) Many sessions of counseling, countless other books, marriage seminars, sermons on forgiveness and um, all these things. And none of them, I'm not saying that they didn't help. But none of them have done for me what this book has. Because it was through this book that I was able to finally, once and for all, break free of the hurts and unforgiveness and resentments. All those things that just clung to my soul. They sucked the life out of me. They sucked the life out of our marriage. And that they kept me from an intimate savior, uh, relationship with my Lord and Savior and, of course, with my husband. I was actually able to take those papers and burn them. And I will never forget that day standing outside at the the outdoor fireplace and throwing those papers in the fire and just watching them turn to ashes. And it felt freeing. I, I mean, physically, I could just feel like such a lighter load. I felt free. And I somehow, I just knew inside at that moment that, it was gone. It, they, they were gone. They left me. And, you know, listen, these weren't, you know, maybe you're listening to this saying, well, I really have reason. I had reason too. And I think my, my husband would be one of the first people to admit that. I mean, we both did things, said and did things that, that were hurtful to, to one another. Uh, we're both sinners. We're both broken people. But um, my hurts and my offenses, they, they were justified as, as far as that goes. But (laughs) it's not my job to hang on to them and to cling to them. And you know what? Funny thing. When I completely let go, when I burned those papers, my husband, interestingly enough, he stopped doing all the things that I had written down on those papers, those things that that really bugged me, that that got under my skin, that that hurt me, that made me so angry. He stopped doing them. My friend, that was truly God at work in his life. As I focused on mine and my own relationship with God, and I, when I began to truly trust him, to truly trust God with my feelings, with my emotions, and most of all, with my husband. Now, as far as the book itself, I don't feel it's a once and for all read because a lot of our life journey is is two steps forward, one step back kind of thing. And I've referred to this book more than once over the years. And oh, my husband and I read it together when we were on vacation. Actually, we, we read it together and it, it, again, it further helped us along in our marriage. And we really need to read this book with the help of the Holy Spirit. Because it's not only saturated with life-giving truths, but it's also saturated with painfully convicting truths as well. And like the author points out, dying to self, it's not a thing that we do once and for all. It's an everyday occurrence, right? Yes, there is an initial dying to self upon revelation of something, but it's going to ever after be a constant dying all day, every day, Put before us in a thousand ways, a constant yielding, having to yield to Christ. Because let's face it, things come up, they, they happen. Hurts, offenses, disappointments, they happen all the time. And they're all really, they're all God's way of, of breaking us. Ways in which, like I said before, the big eye, it, the big eye that just rises to the surface and it takes over our thinking, it takes over our emotions, and it takes over our actions. But picking up this little book every so often for me as I struggle to die to myself, it's a consistent reminder 
of my call, your call, every believer's call to follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He was the suffering servant. I have an excerpt from one of the chapters I'd like to share with you where the author, Mr. Hessian, presents a very vivid imagery of Christ bearing this golden water pot or a pitcher, and in it contains the water of life. So we're going to put our imaginations to work so that we can bring this vivid imagery to life in our own minds, and we'll do that right after this brief message. You're listening to the One Little Candle podcast. Like what you hear? If so, please subscribe, and while you're at it, share it with a friend or family member. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and there you can go beyond the show and get in on the conversation. You'll also enjoy having access to extra goodies such as resources, promotions, and giveaways. And, of course, a sneak peek at upcoming episodes. And now, back to the show. Okay, I'm going to ask you to do something, if you can. I'd like you to just close your eyes for a minute. Close your eyes. Uh, Wait a minute. Unless, of course, you're listening to this as you're driving in your car, then please just keep your eyes on the road, okay? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) But seriously, close your eyes and picture Christ. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he's standing there and he's dressed in a vivid, white, spotless robe. And in his hands, in his mighty, loving, nail-pierced hands, he is holding this beautiful, pure gold pitcher. And then there you are. You're standing there and you're holding a cup. Nothing special, just a plain old ordinary cup. But you're not standing there alone. You're standing there amongst a line of people who are, like you, holding their ordinary cups as well. And you're all waiting for Jesus to come and fill your cups with his water of life as he passes by. And as Jesus nears you, your heart just begins to pound. It begins to, begins to beat faster in the anticipation of the actual privilege of having your cup filled with Jesus as much needed water of life. And he comes over to you and he stops and he looks into your eyes. And as he's looking at you, you can see the love that he has for you in those eyes of his. He slowly lifts the beautiful gold pitcher to fill your ordinary cup. And he looks into your cup and then stops. He slowly begins to put the pitcher back down. Are you wondering why Jesus stopped at filling your cup? Why did he put the pitcher back down after he looked inside your cup? Here's what the author has to say about that. He says, only one thing prevents Jesus from filling our cups as he passes by, and that is sin. Sin in one of its thousand forms. The Lord Jesus does not fill dirty cups, he says. Anything that springs from self, no matter how small it may be, is sin. Self-pity in trials or difficulties, self-seeking in business or Christian work, self-indulgence in one's spare time, sensitiveness, touchiness, resentment, and self-defense when we are hurt or injured by others, self-consciousness, reserve, worry, fear, all spring from self, and all our sin, and makes our cups unclean. You see, my friend, Jesus cannot and will not fill your cup with his water of life if it's dirty inside. If it's dirty with the sin, with some of the sins that I just mentioned, I mean, think about it, though. That's really all we have to offer Jesus, our dirty cups most of the time, right? We're sinners, and well, that makes us dirty. And Jesus has a right to refuse our dirty cups with his water of life. So does that mean that it's impossible for Jesus to ever fill our cups 
Of course not. Thankfully, no. It's not impossible because I'm going to quote the author again when he says, but all of them, that is our sins, all of them were put into that other cup, which the Lord Jesus shrank from momentarily in Gethsemane, but which he drank to the dregs at Calvary, the cup of our sin. Now, suppose you've let the Lord Jesus cleanse your cup and have trusted him to fill it to overflowing. And then something comes along, a touch of envy or temper. What happens? Your cup becomes dirty again, and it ceases to overflow. And if we are constantly being defeated in this way, then our cup is never overflowing. You see, Jesus he doesn't want to fill it a quarter of the way full. He doesn't want to fill it halfway full or almost to the top. He wants our cups to overflow. As he says in, in, in his word, he came so that we can have life and that we can have it abundantly. Jesus is all about abundance. But, you know, <laughs> in, in dying to self every day and, and, and this struggle that we always have, I mean, it's, it's a spiritual battle, right? God tells us we're not battling against flesh and blood. We're, we're battling against um, spirits. We're, we're battling against Satan. We're, we're, battling, we're battling against an unseen enemy, although he manifests himself in many ways. But that's, again, why I can't stress enough. This book isn't just something to read and put down. I have found myself having to go back to it and had to remind myself and be encouraged to stay the course. We're just like those Israelites in the wilderness. Sometimes I think, oh, how they saw God do all these things for them. How can they go out there and grumble and complain and worry and stress and stop trusting God when, when he did so much for them? And then it's like, hello, Rebecca, you do the same thing. <laughs> I do the same thing. I forget. That's why, little side note here, it's good to journal. If you don't journal, if you don't have a prayer journal, Start. Start today. It doesn't have to be something fancy, although I, I like to buy fancy little journals, but it can just be a notebook of any kind. Write it down. I can't tell you how often I've gone back through the journals and I have been reminded of all God's done for me and I had forgotten. I say at the time I'm never going to forget, but darn it all, I do. I do. Life just throws so much at us. So, yeah, we just we need to be reminded of the things that God's done for us. We need we have to be reminded that we're not as great and perfect as we all think we are. And we need to be on the lookout, of course, for those hidden sins that trip us up. They trip us up and they keep us from having our cups being filled to overflowing with Jesus. So. You're going to be required to honestly look at your life as a Christian when you read this book and examine just how much of this self that there is within you. And if you're like me, you're going to find out there's a lot more than you realized. Honestly, there were times I think I hated doing it, to be honest. But I, I, I did it because, again, you got to read the book with the help of the Holy Spirit. Ask him to really help you. I did it knowing that it's something that, I, as one who claims the name of Christ, I have to do it. I had to do it in order to be filled with him. I had to be willing to suffer, and I had to be willing to set myself aside just as my Lord and Savior constantly did, and, and as he did for me, as he did for you. Our wills must be broken to his will. And as the author says, it's painful, it's humiliating, but it's the only way in order to be not I, but Christ, right? We're supposed to be not I, but Christ. And I love this. He compares the sea in Christ as to, he says, the, well, he says the letter C is a bent I. And I like that. We have to really bend, right? We have to bend that I and twist it, let it be twisted and molded into the shape of a C. The proud self within us, it has to be broken. That proud self that justifies itself, that proud self that's unyielding, that wants its own way, that feels it has to always stand up for its own rights and seek its own glory. 
And I believe that that book will accomplish this in your life if you are willing. Now, because this book was so rich in content, I really appreciated that the author, he kept the chapters short. They were only three to five pages long. And so by keeping these chapters short and sweet, it really helps the reader to digest everything that's that's being presented. And at the end of the book, the author presents us with two choices. And I read, quote, There then is our choice to protest our innocence and go down to our house, unblessed, dry of the soul, and out of touch with God. So that's choice number one, okay? We can say, no, no, that, that's not me. That, that, those things can't be sinful. Mm, no, um, no, no, not even going there. You can do that. Or here's choice number two. Or to justify God and to enter into peace, fellowship, and victory through the blood of Jesus. That's our choice. So I ask, are you desiring to go deeper with God? Because if you are, then reading the Calvary Road is a great place to start. Okay, before I forget, because I seem to have a habit of forgetting this, let's get to today's song. I think a great song to solidify what we heard today is... The song by C.C. Winans. Uh, the last name is W-I-N-A-N-S. I don't know if you ever heard of her. C.C. Winans. I love the version that she does. The song is called I Surrender All. I'm sure most of you are familiar with it, but uh, have a listen today. Again, on whatever platform you go to, I use YouTube, so I will have the link there for you in the podcast show description. And do not forget, I want to give away one free copy to one lucky subscriber. So if you'd like to get your hands on that free copy, please make sure you're subscribed and check out One Little Candle on Instagram. It is there that I will have all the names collected and I will choose one at random. I think I'll stick my uh, 19-year-old son with that job. (laughs) So yeah, check us out on Instagram. Um, Subscribe, please follow us and get in on that freebie. And a little bit about next week's episode. Next week's episode is going to, just kind of like this episode, it's going to tie back to the first episode, episode number one. If you haven't checked it out, please go check it out. It's called Stolen Inheritance. Uh, Hope after a stolen inheritance, should I say. But um, I have one more episode, kind of, you know, I guess you could call this the trilogy. But next week's episode is going to be about greed. (laughs) So check it out. Don't miss it. And listen, until then, I just want you to keep something in mind. That's this. The darkness is much more than this world can handle. So you go out and be that one little candle. Thanks for joining me today, and I will see you next week. Do you want to know more about God? Are you looking for true peace and hope in your life? True peace and hope, that's only found in God. If you want to know more about God and how you can experience his love and peace, Peace with God, a ministry of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, will show you the way. Log on to www.peacewithgod.net. That's www.peacewithgod.net and find the peace and hope that you've been looking for.